So just because our engine is at the machine shop doesn't mean our work stops. We still got to work on these rocker shafts. Recall that these on the end move perfectly fine, but these on this end are seized up. So what I'm going to do is same thing I tried to do with the lifters. We're going to heat them with the torch. Sorry if you can't see that, it's backlit. Then we're going to hit them with PB Blaster, let them sit for a few minutes, and then try to tap on them with a hammer and see if we can't get any sort of movement out of them. Then, recall from the last video I said I was going to do something with automatic transmission fluid. I plan to try to soak them in automatic transmission fluid, maybe mixed with a little Marvel Mystery Oil or something, to get uh, all this gunk off because obviously you do not want that going into your engine. So, without further ado, we'll get to that, and then I'll try to set up a bath I can put them in. All right, we're gonna let that go sit for a couple of days while I go clean out that oil pan. So this oil pan does have a pretty good amount of gunk in it. Just sludge. So, a uh, preliminary thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go hit it with some of this uh, engine degreaser. And uh, see if this doesn't do anything. It should. And I'll wipe it out with some paper towels. Well, that certainly did something. I uh, scraped a lot of the sludge out of the bottom with a piece of cardboard. You would not believe how much there was. I have it in a bottle. And then uh, sprayed it with some of that degreaser, wiped it out. It got a lot of it off. I certainly would not want to throw this back on a rebuilt engine unless I get like much more of that solid stuff out. So I might uh, actually bring this by the machine shop and see if they can't throw it in their parts washer. They have that like steam washer or whatever, they'll get a lot of this off. So that's certainly an option. Plus they could wash the outside to get all that off so I can paint it. Surprisingly, the underside of this thing, you know, all the paint flaked off, but it was shiny, I guess just cause it was covered with oil so it wasn't gonna rust, but that's what we got so far. I might bring it by the shop next time I go there. See if they can't clean it more for me. Wish y'all could feel how much this weighs. I probably have several ounces of sludge in this bottle, just all from the oil pan. Maybe I'll sell it on OnlyFans, I don't know. Soon it will be warm, and this engine will run, and we can drive the car. Can't wait. Now I don't know about you, but I would have loved to keep the patina look on my engine. Unfortunately, if you saw the condition of the block, it was a little too far gone. It was all covered with rust. So that's going to have to be chemically stripped and completely repainted like new. Meaning, we want our valve covers to match. Now, uh, these, other than the paint looking atrocious, uh, one of them's also got a hole rusted in it that we're going to have to fix. So, first thing we're going to have to do is strip the paint off of these. Now, some of y'all might be thinking, well, why go to that effort when you can just get new ones, they're cheap. Well, this is a Mel. There are no new ones available. So we're gonna have to work with what we have here. So, well, what's been the theme of these videos for since the beginning? Let's go try. So here's the setup. Uh, I got this, uh, Smart Strip Pro Professional Strength Paint Remover. 
and they had an entire shelf full of these at Goodwill for 10 cents each. So I'm like, what the heck? And I bought some like three months back and now I have a use for it. 10 cents well spent. Allegedly removes up to 20 coats of high performance coatings. So I'm gonna say this is pretty good stuff. Now it says, uh, brush it on with a rough brush or a pad and uh, might need to agitate it a little bit. So let's see how that works. I will say I am gonna miss the junkyard markings. Come around over here, which one is it? There's the hole that's gotta be patched. That's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. We'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, so whatever this stuff is appears to have reacted with the foam in my brushes. And is melting them, for lack of a better word. But, uh, appears to be doing something, so I'm not going to complain. While that was stripping, I took my timing cover outside, sprayed it with some engine degreaser, and, you know, let that sit, scrubbed it a little bit with a wire brush, rinsed it off. I'm debating whether this should be stripped too, or just left as is. I'm thinking it should be stripped and painted as well because I don't like the look of oxidized aluminum on modern engines and I know that will happen after a few years if I leave this bare. So I guess it's going to have to get painted. But check this out. The surface got eaten by something. I did notice there was like a buildup on the back of the water pump where maybe the water pump was leaking, but uh, did, did antifreeze like eat the aluminum or something? What's with that? It doesn't go to the back side. Back side is still fine, but yeah, that kind of threw me for a curveball. If anybody knows, do chime in in the comments. Sweeping up the oil dry so I can reuse it. It worked. They did flash rust a little because I ran them underwater to clean them. So that should come right off. Yeah, it's okay. Back here is obviously paint stripper ain't going to do anything about that. That's still there. Okay. All right, let's try to patch that hole now. We are going to attempt to repair this. So I've ground away the rust from that area and a little bit here for the ground clamp. I have our China electric flux core. We're going to attempt to do this, but we're losing daylight. I also don't know how it's going to turn out. So we'll see. And unfortunately, you may have to bear with me because I can't hold the camera and weld. <laughs> so I'm sorry. So yeah, we might have made that worse. I'm starting to think JB Weld is an option. I wonder if I can make a patch to go over it, if maybe that would improve things. It's worth a shot if I can find some sheet metal. Well, it's time for a rocker shaft update. They've been soaking in that 
Marvel Mystery Oil Automatic Transmission Fluid Concoction for about two weeks now, and they're still stuck. So, um, tried to look online to see if there was anything else I could do other than completely disassembling them, which is an option, and uh, found a YouTube channel called Phila TV, that's P-H-I-L-A TV, that had a bunch of rocker shafts from a Volkswagen 40 horsepower engine and soaked them in vinegar, which ate all the rust, cleaned them out, and uh, they were able to move then. You know, it took a little force, but it ate all the rust inside them. I think these are rust jacked. So, got a uh, mega sized pasta pan and some basic 5% white vinegar. They had so called cleaning vinegar that they were selling in a like half gallon jug for the same price, but it didn't tell you the concentration. So, you know my luck, it was the same 5% concentration. They slapped a different label on it and we're gonna charge more for it. But you know, I got that and I guess I'm gonna go give these a soak for about a week and we'll see how effective it is. Now, worst case scenario, we can use Affy rocker shafts. However, these pedestals on an Affy are longer. So if you're gonna go the Affy rocker shaft uh, route, you still have to use the pedestals from a mall. So it will require disassembly of these. And like I said, you're gonna have to have these pedestals. I don't know how possible it is to cut down the pedestals from an Affy. I don't know if I'd recommend that. And I have heard old hot rod stories where they've just machined down the pedestals that are cast into the head on a metal so they could use FE shafts. But I'm going to say that's a worst case scenario thing. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up and we'll see what happens. Correction from earlier, it is pronounced Philae TV, P H I L A TV. Okay, now I think we can go back to these, uh, well, this valve cover that I accidentally made worse by attempting to weld it. I had the idea of just putting a patch in this, so I took a piece off of our door metal. There it is. Then I noticed we also got some pinholes here and here. So I'm thinking it might just be easier to use that patch since it's curved here and then maybe cut this out and put another patch there. Uh, I'm thinking that might be the move. Plus this, uh, this is a thicker piece of metal so it'll absorb more heat so hopefully this tin won't just melt. That, that might be a viable strategy. We're gonna see how that works. Yeah, that bottom cut turned out kind of meh because it was a little hard to get in there, but that patch works, I guess. Also, all right, so this metal is not as thin as we thought it was. That's actually a decent thickness. I don't know what that is, 30 thousandths. I don't have a way to measure it, but that looks like it'll work. Oh, that looks horrendous, and I blew through it again, but it does hold. So it's on there pretty solidly. It's just, uh... You know, I've decided I'm probably gonna have to go over it with JB Weld anyway, but for the time being, I think we might have just made a legitimate patch and a valve cover.
sure. Obviously, uh, I'm gonna reiterate, I'm not planning on doing a full restoration. I just kinda wanna get it running. So. Oh yeah. That, that just looks absolutely horrendous. I am so proud of myself. Well, thank goodness I looked it up, because out of curiosity, I uh, looked up to see if vinegar can harm aluminum, and apparently it can't. And I believe these pedestals are aluminum. So, may not be a good idea to let these soak too long. I just took them out and rinsed them, and now I'm gonna hit them with the degreaser. And then uh, maybe go put those rocker shafts in a vise and see if I can't get them to move. Maybe put a little more penetrating oil in them after I get all this out. But I can't say that didn't work. That shaft is shiny. Those springs are really good shape. I apologize, we might be getting some light reflection here, but yeah. That was not shiny before. I love how the water is beating because there's just like a bunch of oil and sludge that's just not coming off of these, which is the purpose of the degreaser. But it's effective. Moving on to more parts now, uh, well, I got the engine fan. Started looking around on eBay, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace to see if anybody had a Mel they were parting out that could get me a fan, a water pump pulley, a radiator overflow tank, small parts like that. And uh, after no luck, I decided to go on car part and guess who had the fan? the same yard that sold me the engine. So I got to call them up, they shipped it out to me. They didn't have the water pump pulley, just the fan, so I'm still gonna have to try to track that down. I might make a junkyard run a little later and see if I can't pull one off an FE engine because I know a yard that's got a bunch of 70s Ford trucks and honestly, we could probably make it work, but got the fan, so now we're gonna move on to trying to de-rust this. Well, unfortunately, uh, that engine fan doesn't fit in my vinegar bath. So, here we go. You know, I probably could have left this as is, but uh, once the engine had to go to the rebuilders and so it's gonna get painted. It's like you can't get away with having just one part look like this, unfortunately, so. Oh, that's sort of working. Huh, it's amazing what a little cleanup reveals. Today I learned there are casting numbers on these. Yeah. 
Interesting. Hey, you know what does sort of fit in my vinegar bath, but not really? Valve covers, of course. Um, we're gonna... Slowly. We're gonna make this work. Well, looks like we made some progress today because that didn't move before. Neither did that. So, looks like progress is being made. Excuse me just one second. I figure we'll let that sit for a couple of days. Well, it's been a week and I've uh, rotated it a couple of times inside the vinegar. Looks like it might have done a little bit and that just flash rusted when I took it out and rinsed it. Bottom side. That flash rusted quite a bit, but got more of the paint off and actually did a pretty good job of cleaning it. So what I've opted to do instead is I'm just gonna wire wheel the inside to get all that stuff like as much as I can. And then I bought a uh, rust dissolver bath product that I'm just gonna fill it up with. So here goes. I'll also do that to the other valve cover after I repair the hole. So we're gonna get to that in a little bit, but first I'm gonna go wire wheel this one. All right, so I've commandeered our upstairs bathtub in order to do this. So I've got the valve cover uh, just sitting up on some wood wedges so that'll hold it. There's two wedges set opposed to each other. Check that out. I had a hard time getting the brush down in there, but I improved it. That's just a little bit of baked on stuff that I can, you know, scrape out real quick. Anyway, this one's in here just so it warms up to room temperature for the JB weld to work. I wire wheeled around the welded area. So I got this uh, PB Blaster Metal Rescue Rust Remover Bath. I think it's supposed to be the same thing as Evaporust because it's just a bath you soak stuff in. It's non-toxic. It literally says you can just dump it into a sewer because it's biodegradable, non-caustic, supposed to be safe on a bunch of materials. So... I'm assuming that's what it is. We're gonna see how well this works, cause what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fill up this valve cover with it. Maybe I'll grab some stuff to put in the valve cover so we kill two birds with one stone. Sounds like a good idea. Two birds with one stone. Anybody else notice that cling wrap literally only clings to itself and nothing else? Or is that just a me problem? Should I be wearing gloves while I handle this or something? Probably. Well, here we go with the JB Weld. I just got regular JB Weld. I figure I didn't need that steel stick stuff because this isn't exactly going to be load bearing. It's just stopping all of our oil from leaking out of the top. And I wire wheeled it. You can see metal clean. Metal is clean, like on the edges. Yeah, it's not the best, but like I said, this doesn't have to be load bearing. It just has to somewhat seal. 
and that's really difficult to get down in there with a wire brush so it'll probably be fine good news though my uh, wire wheeling on the inside did seem to clean uh, most of the weld spatter out and that's good because you really don't want one of those little beads to break off and make its way down into your crankcase that would be very bad anyway I say anyway a lot because I just don't know how to transition oh well Mm, that smell brings back memories that I would struggle to describe to people that didn't experience it. Let me tell you, if I could weld as good as I could JB weld, there might just be peace on earth. I'm not even kidding when I say that. Like, look at that. Come on tell me you're not going to see the hoods up at the car show you're going to see that and you're going to go wow those are some skills it's going to be great this engine is being done up full stock i'm going to mix a custom paint color to match as closely as possible the original factory like metallic green color so these valve covers are also going to be that you know, what is it kind of, like almond yellow color, and it's going to look really nice. And underneath that paint, you're going to see that. Beautiful. Now, the one thing that that soak failed to address is the fact that some of these rocker shafts are still stuck. I mean, I can't argue with the very clean results here, but they're still stuck. I'm uh, working on a new theory. We've changed theories multiple times in these video series, but that's just science for you. That they might not be rust jacked. Because I saw a look at the oxidation on this pedestal. I wonder if these are suffering from galvanic corrosion between the steel, this is cast steel, I believe, or forged, between the steel rocker arms and these, I think, aluminum pedestals. So what I've done here is I've mounted these in a block of wood. Maybe we'll hit them with a little penetrating oil and we'll try tapping on them with a hammer, see if we can't break that. And now, after time has passed, we've gone ahead and switched them. That's the JB welded valve cover. That was the valve cover that didn't have a rust hole in it. After soaking for 24 hours, look at how clean that is. It definitely needs to be degreased. I'm gonna hit it with the degreaser. It looks like that uh, metal rescue loosened up a bunch of stuff. And I definitely need to do something about the underside of this rim. But, look at how shiny that is. If you saw the insides of this before, wasn't good. After some degreasing, would I put this back on an engine? 100%? Yes. Yes, I would. Update. We got a little bit of movement out of this one. If you hit it hard enough, it goes back and forth. So maybe I was right. One of the things I did was I took this old junk chisel. I actually found this, but otherwise you probably use a Harbor Freight chisel. Ground the end real precise-ish. I accidentally wrecked it trying to get the distributor out, so I just reground it. And I began uh, hitting it in here between the pedestal and the rocker a little bit the idea being to break that outer layer of galvanic corrosion and i guess i was on to something there so i'm going to hit this with some pb blaster move on to this one hopefully free it hit it with pb blaster this one this one then try to repeat that process until they all move freely like these 
So, looks like we're moving in the right direction. Ladies and gentlemen, seven out of eight of these move. Some of them only very slightly, but they move. We're going to get some penetrating oil on this and we're going to, we're going to keep going. After some penetrating oil and some brief consideration, I put it right back in the brine. I did discover there was some rust jacking underneath the uh, rockers that came free. So, you know, we're going to let this sit for another 24, 48 hours, see if we can't free them up even more. On this side, actually, they're in much better shape. Oops. Hard to do this one-handed. Funny enough, uh, this was the side that had the uh, rusted out valve cover. But the rockers are in better shape. I'm not going to question it. Well, I think that's where we're going to end it for this one. And stay tuned, because hopefully, hopefully, we're going to get the engine block back from the machine shop soon. And we can begin doing some final preparations and reassemble it. So, hope you enjoyed this video. And, bye.